many of you are probably wondering at this point just what your potential for developing muscle might be. As potential is the expression of a possibility, there do exist certain indices which suggest what your ultimate potential is. The first of these is bone size. You don't have to be too concerned about this as all that's really required is an average size bone structure. If your bones are too small, if you tend to be frail like the Woody Allen type, your, your bones will be too weak to support a heavy musculature and to withstand the contraction of a strong muscle. If, however, your bones are too big, you may have the capacity to hold more muscle, but you won't have the requisite beauty that is the hallmark of a bodybuilder's physique. So don't be too concerned about bone size. If you're average in bone size, that's really all you need to worry about. The second feature, or the second indice of what your ultimate potential is, is your muscle length. What I'm talking about here is where your muscle attaches at the insertion and at the origin. I'm not talking here about how long your bones are in comparison to your muscles. The longer a muscle is, the thicker it can become. If a muscle is only one inch long, it's never going to get more than one inch thick. Its width will never exceed its length, in other words. Two inches long, two inches thick. What is important is how long the muscle is in comparison to the bone on which it resides. Does your bicep extend the full length of your upper arm bone like Larry Scott's does? I'm sure you all recall the famous photo or pose of Larry Scott with his arm extended. It seems as though his bicep goes right into his forearm. It is that great length of his bicep which allowed it to become so massive. Franco is a good example, on the other hand, of a, of a short bicep. You notice the, the gap at the end of Franco's bicep. But Franco's biceps were always difficult for him to develop also. So here you have two extremes. Larry Scott, on the one hand, with his very long bicep, which came to be his best developed body part, and Franco Colombo, on the other hand, who inherited a short, knotty-looking bicep and therefore was never, never able to quite develop to the same degree Larry's did. But this is not a uniform feature over the entire body. You may have long biceps and short calves, or long triceps and short biceps. There are very few people, if any, who have this, again, this feature uniformly over the entire body. So don't despair if indeed you do have a short bicep or a short calf. Another factor which is not quite as tangible is muscle fiber density. That is, how many muscle fibers do you have per square inch? The more, the more muscle fibers you have per square inch, obviously, the more potential for mass development you have. This is not tangible, and the only way you could really discover or find out accurately what your fiber density is would be to do a muscle biopsy. And that's not a very pleasurable procedure, so I'd recommend against it. One more indice is metabolism. There are those people who are just born with a metabolism that seems to gear itself towards the rapid development of muscle tissue. And there isn't a whole lot you can do to change that. In my book called The Heavy Duty Journal, I talk about metabolic momentum, where your metabolism can be primed for a little bit faster muscle growth and the burning of, of fat. But again, this is uh, something that can only be tampered with within a very limited range, so don't worry so much about that. So as you can see, nature is very stingy and random in doling out her gifts. But that's the way it has to be. We can't all be champions. We can't all be Albert Einsteins. Somebody has to take out the garbage, let's face it. Only those who possess an abundance of the required physical and inherited traits can ever hope to develop to the Mr. Olympia level. Every area of human endeavor, not just bodybuilding, every area, academics, basketball, any other kind of sport especially, stands out uh, with a few really top-level competitors. And again, this is as it must be. Nature is very, very random and stingy in doling out these gifts to people. Surprisingly, however, I see quite a few physical types around the country at my various seminars and exhibition who seem to possess a tremendous amount of physical potential. Many more than achieve a great deal of success in bodybuilding, that's for sure. Why is this? Why are there so many individuals with, with great potential, and yet there are so few who develop or fulfill that potential? I think the reason is simply psychological factors. If you were given 100,000 normal adult males, you might be lucky to find 20 with a physical potential to become Mr. Olympias. From those 20 thoroughbreds, you might call them, maybe 10 would possess the necessary drive and ambition to fulfill those potentials. And of those 10, you'd be lucky to find two who had the intelligence as well to know how to train and diet to fulfill their ultimate potentials. Do you see now how the odds of developing a top physique are actually stacked against you? 
Now, don't misunderstand me. This is not meant to discourage anyone from trying, however, for you will never know how far you might have gotten unless you try. And again, with the knowledge of scientific training and nutrition, we can, all, we can all improve and fulfill our own individual potentials, whatever it happens to be. And that is the most important thing. Don't, however, worry about your individual potential. Potential is only the expression of a possibility, something that can be assessed accurately only in retrospect. In other words, you'll never know how good you might have become unless you try. So let's get with it.